Hello, welcome to the webinar, How to Transport Your Child Safely, Rear-Facing Car Seats. Thank you for tuning into this. And just by way of introduction, I want to tell you that there are lots of different car seats on the market. Um, and I'm going to show a lot of different pictures in this presentation. But the picture shown doesn't imply that we're endorsing any particular seat. And all the car seats that um, are shown and that are sold legitimately in the U.S. meet the same safe federal safety standards. Okay, I am Suzanne Ogaitis Jones and I coordinate the Child Passenger Safety and Occupant Protection Healthcare Project, which is um, housed at the Maryland Institute for Emergency Medical Services Systems. That's a mouthful. But we also host the Maryland Safe Kids Coalition. And Cindy Wright Johnson down here is our moderator today, and she runs the Safe Kids Maryland program and the EMS for Children program. Um, as I mentioned, there are lots of different car seats and lots of different cars, and it can be pretty challenging to figure out how to install your car seat for your particular child in your particular car and get it properly done unless you read all your manuals. Um, but another point I want to make is that children of all ages notice what others are doing, particularly what their parents are doing. So you need to be a good role model in everything you do in the car and particularly buckle up. And then kids are going to be more likely to buckle up. There is data that shows that when drivers are unrestrained, 71% of the children were also unrestrained in the car. So buckle up on every ride, every time. OK, a few more facts. Um, because car seats, there are so many car seats and different ways to use them for different ages and different car features, um, a lot of car seats are not being used correctly. Um, it's estimated that more than half are not used correctly. However, when they are used and particularly used correctly, they're very effective at protecting children. Um, the data we have, and I think this is probably conservative, is that car seat use decreases the risk of fatal injury by 54% for toddlers and 71% for infants. Okay, when you first get your car seat, you get a card like this attached to the seat, and maybe you recall this. Hopefully, you filled this out and mailed it in. This is the registration form or the warranty card, and what happens with this is the manufacturer is required by law to provide this and, provide, and required to get you information about any recalls on your seat or any labeling problems and they would do that without charge. Um, this seat also had, this card, sorry, also has the date of manufacture, the model number. Some of them have the expiration date listed here too. So it's a really important card to um, fill out and send out. And they are not allowed to use this information for any other purpose other than the recalls and notifications about your car seat. If you're not sure whether you filled this out or you got a seat from somebody else, you can, go on the manufacturer's website and register your seat. You could also go straight to the NHTSA website, which is NHTSA is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And I'll give you the, that information much later in the presentation. And you can check then to see if you're, there is a recall on your seat. Okay, so when we talk about proper car seat use, and this presentation is focusing on rear-facing car seats, but there's really a context of how we look at this. So we talk about it with selection, what kind of seat, what direction should the seat um, face in the car, location, specifically where are you placing that seat in the car, how do you install it, and how does the harness fit the child to keep the child safe. So this presentation kind of uses that as the format. Let's talk a little bit about types of rear-facing car seats. So Young children must face the rear, and I'll go into that a lot more about why in just a moment. But there are two options of seats that will accommodate rear-facing kids. One would be the rear-facing only type, or sometimes called like a carrier seat. You see it has the handle, so you can have your child restrained inside that seat and then carry it around or use it for public transportation. It's very popular with newborns. They usually come with a base that the base is installed in the car, and then you just click the seat into the base. It's very easy. Um, these seats can also be used without, or I should say most of these seats can be used without the base as well. Um, if, for instance, you're, you know, you're borrowing a car or you're using an Uber, you could go that route. 
The other option is using a convertible seat. That's this one over here. That's a much bigger seat and that gets installed in your car and then you leave it there because it's just too big to carry around. Convertible seats have two places where the seat belt or the latch strap, which I'll talk about in a minute, but how those would secure the seat to the vehicle. So we'll talk about those belt paths. Um, with the rear facing only seat, it has one belt path here. And then if you're using the base, you would install the base with its belt path. Okay, so this simulation, and I'll show this a couple times, what this is showing is that on the top is the rear facing child in a convertible seat, and on the bottom is that same child or dummy placed in the vehicle seat forward facing, and then the crash test, so that's the movement here. And you can see in the forward facing crash, that would be going that way, how much more the child's head is moving now see how much that child snaps forward. That could cause severe injuries to the neck, spinal cord. These can be fatal injuries. While with a child who is rear facing, the forces are spread out over the back of the car seat and keeping the child very safe. Okay, let's... So selection. Um, you wanna get a car seat that is the one that fits your child, the budget that you can spend on that car seat, one that works with your vehicle, and most importantly, one that you can use every time correctly. Um, as I mentioned, there are a lot of choices with car seats, um, and they all have to meet the same standards. So don't feel like, you know, unless you buy the most expensive, you're getting the best seat. There's a lot of times there's features on the more expensive ones that are nice, but they're not essential for crash protection. Um, you do need to think about whether you want the rear facing only seat versus a convertible if you're starting out with your newborn. And you know, convenience if you're walking around with ch your child, it's a good reason why a lot of people go for the rear facing only seats. Um, a lot of them also want the, where it can easily connect with a stroller, and that makes sense. But know that most of most kids are gonna be using their rear facing only seat for about a year, and then they're gonna to have to move their child to a convertible seat and use that rear facing till its weight limits. Um, so some people want to save money or just make it more straightforward and they go straight to the convertible and that is fine. The American Academy of Pediatrics is a national group that makes many, many policy recommendations on child safety, child health. And they recommend that children stay rear facing until the highest height or weight of their car seat. So if you're using the rear facing only seat for the first year, you would then move your child into the convertible and go keep your child in that convertible seat until the highest height or weight limits for that seat, okay? You don't wanna move your child straight out of the infant seat at about a year into a forward facing seat. That would be wrong and dangerous. Okay, this video shows kind of the same thing as the other, but a little better view because you can see the children um, lined up. The one over here is rear facing. This is the forward facing child. So let me, okay, so you can't even see the rear facing child in this crash test because the child is kind of cocooned down in the rear facing seat, but you can see this, this dummy's head is snapping forward very alarming. And of course, this would be extremely fast if this were the real crash test. Okay, first step. Um, so we talked about you are going to be buying your seat, you've, but you've decided which seat you want to get and you've purchased this. What is the next step? It, the first thing you do then is to read your car seat manual and your vehicle manual. Um, someone did the math and said there's about 90,000 combinations of car seats and cars and specific seating positions in cars. So uh, we talk about reading manuals. Um, so you do want to read your manuals to find out what they say. You also want to look at the labels on your on your seats and in your manuals. Um, the manuals have a lot of rules about what they have to show and they usually have great diagrams in there to explain things. Your car manual is also going to be really important to tell you about where to place that seat in your car. Um, particularly in places like the, the center rear seat. Okay, so here's some of the labels that you'd find on an infant seat. This one up here in the upper right hand corner is the, the one that indicates the date of manufacture, the serial 
number, and sometimes they have the expiration date on it. This is an important thing to note where it is. Maybe take a photo of it with your phone or write it down in your manual because if you have a problem with your seat and you call the manufacturer or you want to look up a recall, you're going to need to have all this information so that they know exactly which seat you're talking about. So this is really important to um, keep track of. This information here is actually on the base of an infant seat. Um, and you can see there's lots of diagrams to show you how to install it using different methods. This is label here is on the car seat and it's showing um, how you would strap the seatbelt onto that carrier seat if you were using it that way. So the labels can be extremely helpful. And sometimes after you've read your manual once, you might just need to glance at these labels to just refresh your memory. Okay, on convertible seats, um, there will also be a lot of labels. And this particular convertible seat has color-coded things. Um, so if you look here, you see that the blue indicates um, everything that pertains to a rear-facing installation. And then because it's a convertible seat, it can be used forward-facing, so the red is going to indicate that information. And you can see over here, this is hard to know what you're looking at here, but this is the belt path um, for a rear-facing installation, so it's still color-coded here. Okay, let's talk about some parts on your car seat. So looking at the rear facing or carrier seat, I mentioned, you know, it's a carrier seat, it has a handle. Different car seat manufacturers will have different rules about where that handle needs to be when you're traveling in the car. So you need to read through your instructions and see what they recommend. Um, we talk about the plastic part, the main car seat part as the shell. But the shell has different slots in it, which you can't see here because they're behind a head pillow. Um, but these slots have the harness straps go through them, and these harness straps can be moved between different slots. Um, in this picture here, looking at the front of it, there are these two inserts, a body pillow and a head pillow. Those came with the seat, and it's really important that you only use the inserts that come with the seat and use them according to the directions. Some of the manufacturers have very specific rules about when you need to stop using these, like when a child is, say, 11 pounds. Um, but that can vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. Okay, the harness is here in the center. It's a five-point harness, and it has a chest clip across the uh, straps to hold them securely um, with the child so the child can't slip out of it. Um, this is the harness adjuster strap and the release button to tighten or loosen the car seat. Um, looking at the back, there's the splitter plate. That is what holds the ends of the harness straps, the shoulder harness straps. And in many seats, you're going to need to, um, to adjust the height of these harness straps, you're going to need to take those harnesses off of that splitter plate. So it's important to know. The carrier release, that's to release that from the base. Here's the base. Uh, this is a particular kind of base that has something called a uh, load leg. Don't worry about that. that lot, not a lot of seats have those. Some do. It's a nice feature, but it's not essential um, for performance. So. Okay, and looking at the base, this is um, a particular kind of base that has um, the adjusters for this foot down here um, right on the side. So this foot is a moving part because vehicle seats have a different amount of recline and babies need to be at a very specific amount of recline in their car seats in the car. You can adjust that foot to tilt this all back more or less. Um, so there will be a way to adjust that foot. Um, then there's going to be an indicator of some sort to show whether you have indeed reclined it properly. There's also on this seat something called a lock-off. Some seats have these. They can look very different from one seat to another. So that's a, one of those things that you're just going to have to see what is on your particular seat. The belt path for the base is going to be kind of right here, which would end up being kind of under the child's feet, the child's carrier would be up here. And then there's these lower anchor connectors. So those are a way that you can install this seat in your car um, by clicking it to the latch system. Looking at the basic parts for the convertible seat and the rear facing convertible seat. So the shell is kind of the whole big thing. Um, you have the harness straps and here you see them here. Again, it's a five point harness and has a chest clip. They may have another pad under here um, and check your instructions about whether that's required to stay on or whether there's options for 
taking that off. There also can be some shoulder pads. Again, check your instructions about those. These harness straps are held on by a splitter plate at the back, but in this particular car seat they're showing, it's covered up under the plastic. You'd have to look under here to find that. Um, this particular seat, you can adjust the height of the harness straps by this harness slide adjuster. You'd grip it and pull it up that way. Oops, and I changed the picture. Um, one other thing I want to mention, well, maybe two other things with this seat. You can tilt this seat at different amounts, and there will be a way to do that um, that I'll talk about a little bit later. And to tighten the harness straps, here's the harness adjuster strap. This piece here is called an anti-rebound bar. That's on a few seats, not a lot of seats now. It's becoming more popular and it's very much more of like a European thing. Um, so don't worry about if your seat does not have that. Okay, now we're going to talk about direction and location. So I mentioned that you want to keep your child rear facing to the highest height or weight of the seat and that would be for the rear facing seat, not just the infant carrier. Um, and that could be like three or four years old for most children. Um, and that really is the safest thing to protect their head and spinal cord in a crash. Um, people say, oh, but my children's legs are bent, they're going to be uncomfortable. Well, actually they're not. Kids are very, very flexible. Um, and they don't know any better if they're, they've only been facing the rear of the car, they're fine with that. Um, they could sit there with their legs all scrunched up and they're perfectly happy. Now, if we were trying to do that, that would be a whole different story. Okay, more on direction and location. You want to keep your kids, if they're 13 years of age or younger, in the back seat of the car. It's going to be the safest. You never want to have your child in front of an airbag. Um, this illustration here, which is of something you should not be doing, and this is taken straight from a car manual, shows a rear-facing child sitting in the front passenger seat, and the airbag would be here in the glove compartment. If that airbag were to deploy, it would hit right behind that child's head with an amazing amount of force that would probably cause brain injuries and then spinal cord injuries from that head snapping forward. Um, children have died from this. So your car is gonna have a lot of warning labels in it to tell you not to put your kid in the front seat. If you have a vehicle that you have to put your child in the front seat, read your manual very carefully. There, you probably have an option for turning off that airbag, but you know, read that very carefully and consult with one of the experts if you have any questions whatsoever, and I'll tell you where to go for help at the end. Okay, more labels warning you about airbags. So these are mandated by the government and they're located on the visor. Okay, so let's talk about installation. So with installing your car seat, you have a choice, particularly with rear-facing installations. You can use the seat belt or you can use the lower anchor system, which is also called the latch system for lower anchors and tethers for children. If you're using a forward-facing seat, you know, for much later when the child is older, you would use a tether. There are a very few seats on the market that are used rear facing that use a tether. So I'm not gonna go into that. It's really important that you get the angle of your seat proper um, for your particular vehicle and your particular seat and your particular child because the newborn's angle could be different from an older, a toddler, a rear facing toddler. Um, so you need to know how to use the angle indicators. And then you ultimately wanna make sure that once you've used either the seatbelt or the lower anchors to install it, it's secure. It's secured in the car in a way that's pretty snug, but not embedded in your car. So we use the inch test, and I'll show you a video about that. Once your car seat is installed, put your hands where the belt is at the base of the seat and give the seat a good tug. If your seat moves more than an inch side to side or front to back, make sure to retighten. Then test it again. Once your seat does not move more than an inch side to side or front to back, Great job, you've passed the inch test. Okay, so the inch test. The um, video that they showed showed the, mostly the base being installed in the car um, with either the seatbelt or the latch system. So then you would test how tight it is where you had either the latch system or the seatbelt running through that base. And you would pull on it, not ridiculously hard, but give it a good tug and see if it's moving more than an inch. If it is, then it needs to be tightened up. Um, if it's moving just a little bit, that should be okay. If it's less than an inch, that's all right. 
Okay, I've mentioned recline angle. Um, it's really important to have your seat recline properly for a newborn. Newborns, if they're, headed, if they're sitting too upright, their head's gonna tilt forward towards their chest and that can block their airway. Their airway is tiny. Um, so they need to be reclined backwards to keep their head tilted back, keep their airway open. And this is also the safer position in a crash. Um, so seats are usually reclined reclined about 30 to 45 degrees from this vertical. How do you know when it's reclined properly? Um, there will be labels to tell you different, give you the recline options. Some seats have a lot of recline options, like some convertibles can have six or seven options. Um, not all of those would be for the rear facing position, but you have to look at the labels and then you have to look at the indicators too. So this is a common style that for a lot of bases on car seats, a bubble indicator. So if it's properly reclined, that bubble's going to be between those two lines there. This is a different style, um, a wheel, and you want to see no red. If it's all green, then it's reclined properly. This is one that's pretty common for on the seat itself, like if it's on the carrier, you might see it this way as opposed to using the base, or it could be on a convertible seat. And this one happens to be on a convertible seat, and they give you two options here. Um, one line that has to be parallel to the ground, and that would be for the youngest kids, so that would be five to 22 pounds rear-facing. And then for an older rear-facing child, it can be a little more upright, so you would use this line. Okay, how do you adjust these? Well, different ways on different seats. Um, just I mentioned when we were talking about parts, the leveling foot here in this particular Graco seat, you would squeeze here and that would drop this down or you could push it then back in more to recline it less and the recline indicators up here on the side, you can't see. With this particular even flow seat, you would grab this little red tab here and pull it out and it would tilt this whole seat back. There are some convertible seats where you fold parts out from underneath them to achieve a recline. Okay, I've mentioned belt paths. Where are they? So it can be a little confusing. If you're using your infant seat only without a base, the belt path is usually going to be right here, like where the sides of the car seat are. So the seat belt would go through that, stretch across the, like above the child's lap, and then the shoulder belt kind of goes back towards the vehicle seat. Um, some of these have a slightly different version of this where the shoulder belt goes around the back of the car seat. Um, so check your instructions before you use it this way without the base. If you are using the base, the belt path is gonna be here kind of in the foot area of where the car seat would be, um, closest to the vehicle back seat, and the seat belt goes through there and then down through the corresponding side over here and gets buckled. In a convertible seat, you have two belt paths since it can go forward or rear facing. And here's the rear facing belt path, again, under like where the child's feet or knees would be. And if you were turning it forward facing, it would be this belt path, which would take it back behind the child's back. Lower anchors, okay, so lower anchors are one of two ways that you can install your car seat in your car. An important point, you almost never want to use both lower anchors and seatbelt to install your car seat. Um, only one method is needed, except for maybe a few exceptions with booster seats, so don't worry about those. Um, if you want to find out about your lower anchor system, check in your manual, but one thing you want to look for in your car is this symbol. It's a little dot, like a button size, that would be close to where your lower anchor is going to be located. Now see the shiny thing here? That is a metal bracket that sticks out in this particular car, and um, that's where you would hook this piece here on. This is called a hook-on connector. This is a push-on connector, and you would hook onto that bracket to install your seat properly, you use a set of these, two of these. Um, some of these brackets can be hidden in your car, like you could see the dot, but you can't find where the thing is. Um, check your manual, of course, I'm saying this constantly because it's really important, but it could be hidden under a little flap of fabric, or it could be in the seam of your vehicle seat, um, but if the dot's there, it will be there too. If you have an older car, some of them don't have the dot, so look and see what they say about it. You want to see what they the vehicle says about where to install your 
your car seat using the lower angers. Um, not many cars have three full sets of lower angers. In other words, that would be six little brackets. Um, many cars have something like this, which is five individual brackets, but that only allows for two seating positions using latch at a time because one bracket could be used for an outboard position or a center position but you would never use that one bracket for seats in both of those positions at the same time hope that makes sense um, in this illustration you can see here's car seat installed here using latch and then there's an outboard position over here Latch can be very easy to use. Um, it can be pretty fast, but people will say which is better, lower anchor system, latch system, or seatbelt system. There isn't a better answer for that. If For younger kids where you have the choice of either, whichever works better for you. There are certain cars that you try both ways and you will very quickly have a strong preference for one over the other. Um, but I can't tell you which cars have which. So look at your labels. Um, lower anchors, the brackets do have weight limits when you have to stop using the latch system and you need to switch to the seatbelt system. So here, this is a labeling from a convertible seat. And if you look right here, you can see it says, do not install by the latch method for a child weighing more than 35 pounds. So that's in the rear facing position. Many car seats, uh, convertible seats go rear facing to 40 or or even 50 pounds. So that would be important to know that you'd have, to, at 35 pounds, you'd have to switch that seat to being installed using seatbelts. And here for the same seat, if you were using it forward facing, um, you could not use the latch after the child weighs 40 pounds. Most of the carriers, the, in, the rear facing only seats are carriers, you won't have a limit because those seats don't weigh enough that they need to put a limit on. Well, basically when you've reached the limit, uh, the child has reached the weight limit for using that seat. That is still below the limit for the lower anchor system. Okay, let's talk about harnessing. So harnessing height is really important. Um, for rear facing kids, the harnesses need to come from the shoulder level or below it. So where they come out of the shell, this is looking at the back of a convertible seat. Um, so can picture this for a minute, but where the child's shoulders would have to be would be below these slots for this to be the correct slot for the child. Um, so you would need to adjust that somehow. And with this particular seat, you can adjust it by using these little handles here to pull this whole system up and down. It slides up and down. Many other seats, you're gonna have to manually move it between the slots. So you're gonna have to take these harness straps off of the splitter plate, that metal plate, and move them into the correct slot at or below shoulder height. There can also be an adjustment like there is here, but you can't see it too well, where the harness length needs to be adjusted and read your manual to see about that. Um, tightening, loosening the harnesses. You would wanna have your harnesses snug on your child um, when you're done with the chest clip right across at armpit height. And I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. Um, and snug enough that you can't pinch any webbing. With your child sitting properly in the car seat, try to pinch the strap at your child's shoulder. If you can pinch the strap, tighten the harness, and try again. If you can't pinch the strap, you've passed the pinch test. I'm going to show that again. With your child sitting properly in the See car how loose seat, that is? try to pinch the strap at your child's shoulder. If you can pinch the strap, tighten the harness, and try again. If you can't pinch the strap, you've passed the pinch test. Okay, just a comment here. See where the chest clip ends up. It should be at armpit height. It should not be down here really low. And you don't wanna fasten that chest clip first. You wanna buckle these and then maybe wait a little bit to fasten this because as you tighten it, if you fasten that first, as you tighten these straps, it's gonna come up and then be you know, pushing into the child's neck, which would not be safe or comfortable. So you can do that kind of last, but it should be snug enough. You can't pinch anything with a chest clip right across. You also want to make sure as you're doing this, you pull any looseness up out of the hip area here. Um, it's all one piece of webbing. So as you tighten up, you want to get all the looseness out of this whole length here. Okay, so here's two kids that um, 
are secured rear facing. And you can see there's a big difference in age and size, but this child and this child both meet the height and weight requirements for their seats. And you can see where that chest clip ends up right at the end there, right across from uh, their armpits, okay? And look where the shoulder straps go in. You can't really see as they drop down just a little behind the shoulder. So that's perfect for rear facing installation. Okay, I mentioned this earlier, but you don't want to add anything into your seat, um, your harnessing that is not approved by the manufacturer. So these cute little pads here are not good and there actually could be a problem too. They could be um, forcing that chest clip too low or they could be adding um, slack in the harness area um, that shouldn't be there. So you can't add those things in. As I mentioned, some of the inserts that come with your seat can be removed at certain times and some of them are just optional right from the start. So look and see what is recommended by the car seat manufacturer. Okay. Um, we have a video to summarize, let's see if this is going to work straight from here, summarize how to install your rear facing only seat. This video covers some basic tips for using and installing a rear facing infant car seat with the seat belt. Before you begin, read your instruction manual for your car seat and the portion of your vehicle owner's manual on child restraint systems. Pay close attention to the information on your vehicle's seat belt system and how to lock it. Because every car seat and vehicle is different, it's important to follow all instructions carefully. Place the car seat base in the back seat of your vehicle. Carefully thread the seat belt through the correct belt path. Be careful not to have any twists. Buckle the seat belt. Lock the seat belt. Press down firmly on the base and tighten. I want to pause this just for a moment. They mentioned lock the seat belt. Most people's seat belts have a locking function up in the retractor up here. So if you pull your belt all the way out of that retractor, the shoulder belt all the way out, it'll switch to where this starts locking and that would be adequate. With this particular base, there's another option. It's this little orange part here called a lock off that you would put on the other side of this base, not this side. You would feed the shoulder strap through there. So that's just kind of confusing. This is where you definitely want to look at your vehicle manual to see what functions you have for your locking your seatbelt and look at your car seat manual to see if there are built-in locking functions. The base should not move side to side or front to back more than one inch. Make sure your car seat is installed at the correct recline angle. Most car seats have built-in angle indicators or adjusters to assist you. Properly position the harness on your child. Harness straps should lie flat, not twisted, and be placed through the slot at or below your child's shoulders. Buckle the harness and the chest clip and tighten. The harness is snug enough when you cannot pinch any extra material at the shoulder. Place the chest clip at armpit level. Your child is now secure and ready to go. Use your rear-facing infant seat for as long as possible. Once your child outgrows the infant car seat, you should switch to a convertible car seat and use it in the rear-facing position. Rear-facing convertible seats have higher height and weight limits and allow you to keep your child rear-facing longer. Okay, hopefully that pulled together all that information about installing your seat. This video covers some basic tips for using and installing a convertible car seat in the rear-facing position with a seat belt. Before you begin, read your instruction manual for your car seat and the portion of your vehicle owner's manual on child restraint systems. Pay close attention to the information on your vehicle's seat belt system and how to lock it. Because every car seat and vehicle is different, it's important to follow all instructions carefully. Place the car seat in the back seat of your vehicle. Carefully thread the seat belt through the correct belt path. Be careful not to have any twists. Buckle the seat belt. Lock the seat belt, press down firmly on the car seat, and tighten. 
The car seat should not move side to side or front to back more than one inch. Make sure your car seat is installed at the correct recline angle. Most car seats have built-in angle indicators or adjusters to assist you. Properly position the harness on your child. Harness strap should lie flat, not twisted, and be placed at the slot at or below your child's shoulders. Buckle the harness and the chest clip and tighten. The harness is snug enough when you cannot pinch any extra material at the shoulder. Place the chest clip at armpit level. Your child is now secure and ready to go. Remember to use your convertible car seat in the rear facing position for as long as possible. When your child reaches the top height or weight limit indicated by your car seat manufacturer, it's time to switch your convertible seat to face forward. So many of the manufacturers now have produced videos, installation videos that are very specific to their car seat. Um, and you can watch those videos to see how to use their car seat and install it and adjust the harnesses. So I strongly recommend you go online and check out um, the manufacturer for your car seat. Okay, so a few other things. Um, I mentioned some features way back when that really you don't see too often like the, often like the anti-rebound bar or the load leg. There can be other things that come with your seat that were not covered in this talk. Um, so read up in your manual um, to find out how to use those. And if you have any questions, I'll tell you where to get your questions answered. Um, a lot of people ask about whether they can use a hand-me-down car seat. Um, you can with a few specific important rules. You need to know who it came from and trust that person when that person says it's never been in a crash and you can check and see if there's been any recalls on it, look to make sure all the parts are there, it's in con good condition and it's not expired. Um, so within those parameters you can use a, a, a reuse a car seat. Um, when do you go from having your kid rear facing to forward facing? You really want to maximize each stage of car seat use. So as we've said a couple times in this lecture, um, with rear facing, you wanna keep your kid rear facing to the maximum height or weight for that convertible seat, which is probably gonna be something like 40 or 50 pounds for that seat and then height limit as well. One thing I should note, if, um, for your infant seat, or your rear-facing convertible seat, if your child's head gets to within an inch of the top of the back of the shell, that is an indication that the child has outgrown that seat by height, regardless of the actual numbers of height, because some kids might have a longer torso than other kids. Um, but you want that child's head to be down within that shell. So when the child gets close to an inch from the top of the shell, move on to the next stage or the next seat. I want to mention something else um, while we're talking about child safety. You don't want to use your car seat as a crib. Um, it's easy to do that with the carrier types and you absolutely want to never leave your child alone in the car. Um, people get a, in a habit of doing certain things certain ways and then when they change their routine they forget that their kid's in the car. Maybe their kid is sleeping and children die from this. Um, very, very tragic. Um, so you want to create a good routine to remind you that the child is in the car. Like you can put your cell phone back on the floor there when the child's in the car or put a stuffed animal in the front seat. Um, tell your daycare provider to remind you uh, to call you if you don't show up to daycare within you know a certain amount of time. The other thing I want to mention is make sure your vehicles are locked when nobody's in them so that kids, you know, older kids cannot get in there where then they can't get out because children die that way as well. Okay, a few resources in Maryland, and this is really important. So if you follow all that I said and you've gone and you've tried to change your harnesses and you've done the installation, but it's not tight enough or something doesn't seem right, how can you get personal assistance? Well, right now we are doing some virtual assistance. Um, in Maryland, and we're happy to help you. Uh, Maryland Kids and Safety Seats, which is out of the State Health Department, is has a whole system where you can sign up for an appointment. It's free, and you can be one-on-one -on -one virtually with a car seat technician. So here's the information for how to do that, and there's different formats available for doing that virtually. There's also assistance through them if you need help purchasing a low-cost 
cost car seats. So um, please contact Maryland Kids and Safety Seats if you need help. As I've mentioned a couple times, there are other resources as well. Uh, Safe Kids Worldwide is a program that sponsors this particular um, training, and they have a lot of great educational information and videos, so you can go to their website. The National Child Passenger Safety Board, they tend to have things that are a lot more technical, it can also be very helpful. NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, has some great training videos and um, all the recall information for car seats and vehicles can you can check on that right by going to their website and I've mentioned the car seat manufacturers they are wonderful if you have a question that you feel like it's very specific to your type of car seat you might want to just contact them many of them are providing virtual car seat assistance also and the vehicle manufacturers sometimes there's a problem with your car or a question with your car that you need to turn to the experts on that particular car so that's that's what I would recommend there. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact somebody for help in Maryland. Thank you so much for participating in this and stay safe.